Spider bake sale. High proceeds go to real spiders. Well, why not? 7G in the web? Yeah, why not? Sweet! It gave us a donut. There is a, um, the bigger web actually gives us something else, but you have to pay more for it, and I can't afford it right now, so I'm sorry. Did you miss it? The spider bake sale. Down to the right. Come eat food made by spiders? For spiders, of spiders. Oh, okay. Okay. That was getting kind of weird. It was made by- it was spy- wait, what is spider cider? Let's not ask. And it's a froggit. Ribbit, ribbit. Excuse me, human. I have some advice for you about battling monsters. If you act a certain way of fight until you almost defeat them, they might not want to battle you anymore. If a monster does not want to fight you, please. Use some mercy, human. This mechanic isn't truly explained until just now. It's almost as if the game wants to trick you into murdering people before you actually get to this point. And then, the, you know, the realization that you could have done something else. You know, it's like, whoa, shit. And now we have Luke's. We check on him. Don't pick on him. His family name is Eyewalker. Luke's Eyewalker. Luke's Eyewalker. Luke Skywalker. Really? We can pick on him, or don't pick on him. Well, don't pick on him. Finally, someone gets it. Oh, wow. Ooh, sneaky. That was sneaky as shit. But we spare him. And now he's happy. It seems like it's a good time to use that item. Let's see that monster candy. Luke's gave us a bit of a run for our money. There's just one switch. And multiple ways to get to it through these six paths down below. And down here, it's our buddy! Hey there, Mr. Geist. I fell down a hole. Now I can't get up. Go on without me. Wait, ghosts can fly, can't they? I oh, will. And off he goes. I'm sure he'll be a recurring character. At least I hope so. I'm quite fond of Mr. Geist. And now, this is another interesting battle mechanic, of which not everyone is easily able to tell of. Mig uh, Migosp. If you check him real quick, it seems evil, but it's just with the wrong crowd. This is a hint. Um, this battle was quite quite challenging, so be careful. But, by acting on the modes more, and flirting with it, you need to remove it via mercy. And when you remove it via mercy, something interesting happens. Being me is the best. And suddenly he changes. He doesn't want to fight. He just wants to do a dance. He doesn't want to do anything anymore. So you spare him. And now everyone's happy. Enemy behavior changes depending on who, who is in the crowd with them. That's fascinating. And also some equipment. A faded ribbon. Let's equip it. And with that, it puts the bandage into our inventory. And by using it, it heals 10 HP. Again, as I said, good recycling. And with that, we can go to the puzzle and sort it out. You may have seen some vegetables hiding in the grounds, and those are vegetoids. I've never actually figured out how to mercifully deal with them, but you can eat them for a quick boost of HP. And off we go, towards that yellow switch that Toriel taught us about. Pow! And with that, it's all done. I'm pretty sure there's no other items, and so we can progress. And now a bunch of... dolls? The far door is not an exit. It simply marks a change in perspective. Good hint. So we see multiple dolls. Blue, green, and red. Let's get another good look at that. It's a change of perspective. Interesting. If you can read this, press the blue switch. But where would the blue switch be? Would it be behind here? No. In the change of perspective, the doll would be behind the other pillar. Don't pick on him! It should be behind here. It's a switch, press it! In the change of perspective, now we can escape. It's a little bit confusing at first, but easy enough. 
Don't tell anyone it took me a while to figure this out. Oh, Vegetoid, shit. I don't actually know how to um, deal with these guys. Hmm. Well, we'll dodge these and we'll run away, because I don't want... Because if you eat them, it counts as killing them. So we'll flee. They're just vegetables, eh, after all. So this is probably the same deal. It's one of the other ones. But where? Or is it? Press the red switch. But the red switch is over there. Hello, Lukes. And off we go. Press the red switch. Press it! And there we go. Off we go. And I'm not even going to bother looking at the next one. It's behind here, let's be honest. Change perspective. They did it three times. Oh, three of... I've never had this mix-up before. Luke's and Co. This should be interesting. But we can't deal with the Vegetoid. So how do we deal with this? That's interesting, because I don't know how to deal with the Vegetoid without killing it. Hmm, I'm gonna try anyway. This could be interesting. Whoa, that's a... That's a pretty harsh mix-up! Okay, so how do I dodge... How do I mercy kill a vegetable? Vegetoid. Because there's no way of taking out the roach unless you get rid of everyone else around him peacefully. I don't think we have a choice in this one. I think this is a battle that we are forced to flee. And so I will escape. There's not really a whole lot I could have done. We could go up this way, but the red path seemed to signify some sort of important change. Oh, hey! Ribbit, Ribbit. Just between you and me. I saw Toriel come out of here a little while ago. She was carrying some groceries. I didn't ask what they were for. We're all too intimidated to talk to her. Maybe there's something behind Toriel. She said she came out of here, where there is no path to leave, but a wonderful view of the city. And a toy dagger. Or knife. We can equip this. We're not really going to use it, but we may as well equip it. But how did she come in here? Was, was it her intention to leave us a toy knife? Nobody knows. Oh dear, that took longer than I thought it would. How did you get here, my child? Are you hurt? There, there. I will heal you. I should not have left you alone for so long. It was irresponsible to try and surprise you like this. Uh, well, I suppose I cannot hide it any longer. Come, small one. And so she leads us towards past the dead tree. Every time this old tree grows any leaves, they fall right off. Seeing such a cute, tidy house in the ruins gives you determination. Do you smell that? Surprise! It is butterscotch cinnamon pie! I thought we might celebrate your arrival. I want you to have a nice time living here. So I will hold off on snail pie for tonight. Here, I have another surprise for you. We're welcomed into a surprisingly modern and warm house, filled with very earthy tones and such a warm sounding guitar. This is it. A room of your own. I hope you like it. Is something burning? Um, make yourself at home. And we're given free reign of the house. And this is our room. She's had it set up for quite some time. Look at these cool toys. But they don't interest you at all. A box of kids shoes. And a disparity of sizes. In an empty photo frame. It makes you sleepy to hear this. And we awaken from our bed to find a slice of butterscotch cinnamon pie. Cinnamon pie. 
left by Toriel. A nice warm room, a great aesthetic, a loving, caring mother, and sweets. It's the best healing item that you can obtain. It heals all of your hit points. And the music plays in rhythm to each other's tracks. You have seen this type of plant before, but do not know its name. Hmm. Just a regular old bucket of snails. It's Toriel's diary. Read the circle passage? You read the passage. Why did the skeleton want a friend? Because she was feeling bonely. The rest of the page is filled with jokes of similar caliber. Yes. Definitely bigger than a twin-sized bed, but perfect for Toriel. It's an encyclopedia of subterranean plants. You open to the middle. Typha, a group of wetland flowering plants with brown oblong sea pods. Known more commonly as water sausages. That's good to know. Ah, the cactus. Truly the most cinder of plants. Yes. I smiled like an idiot at that preference. But now that we've read that book... Oh! It's a water sausage! We learned! I wonder what's down the stairs. I think you should play upstairs instead. Well, that's worrying. Is there something down there she doesn't want us to see? Is there a mystery? Who knows? Anything could happen. She does look awfully sweet there, you know. With her book, her warm fire, nice armchair. Pie. It intimidates you for the size. It's a clean stovetop. For some reason, there is a brand name chocolate bar in the fridge. Interesting. Up already, I see. Um, I want you to know how glad I am to have someone here. And there are so many old books I want to share. I want to show you my favourite bug hunting spot. I've also prepared a curriculum, uh, curriculum for your education. This may come as a surprise to you. I've always wanted to be a teacher. Actually, perhaps that isn't very surprising. Still, I am glad you are living here. Oh, did you want something? What is it? When can I go home? What? This? This is your home now. Um, would you like to hear about this book I'm reading? It's called 72 Uses for Snails. How about it? Sure. Here is an exciting snail fact. Did you know that snails talk? Really? Slowly? Just kidding. Snails don't talk. Interesting. Yeah. Or bother me if you need anything else. But how do we exit the ruins? I have to do something. Stay here. And she seems quite concerned. The fire isn't burning hot. Just pleasantly warm. You can put your hand inside. It's a history book. Here's a random page. Trapped behind the barrier and fearful of further human attacks, we retreated. Far, far into the earth we walked, until we reached the cavern's end. This was our new home, which we named Home. As great as our king is, he is pretty lousy at names. The ends of the tools have been filed down to make them safer. Yeah, there's not really much else we can look at for now. And now we can continue. With her distracted, maybe we can escape. But let's look at this book. They must have been read many times. But let's see what's down in the mystery of the depths. You wish to know how to return home, do you not? Ahead of us lies the end of the ruins. A one-way exit to the rest of the underground. I'm going to destroy it. No one will ever be able to leave again. I'll be a good child and go upstairs. Every human that falls down here meets the same fate. I have seen it again and again. They come, they leave, they die. 
You naive child. If you leave the ruins, they will kill you. I am only protecting you. Do you understand? Go to your room. Do not try to stop me. This is your final warning. You want to leave so badly? <laughs> you are just like the others. There is only one solution to this. Prove yourself! Prove to me you are strong enough to survive! And now we fight the final boss of the demo. Toriel. She blocks the way. Toriel. She has 80 attack and 80 defense. She knows best for you. I really love this track. It's such a dramatic theme. Raising up against your mother. But the amazing how the attack suddenly stops after it hits you. She almost seems reluctant. You couldn't think of any conversation topics. You could dodge him, and you'd get hit, but it's extremely hard to dodge. You can talk to her, but you think of something to say, but what are you supposed to say to your mother? The person who cared for you and wishes to protect you. She only wishes to save a little girl from being hurt. Would you leave a little child to walk into an underground ruin filled with monsters? Ones that would eat her flesh and bones. Do you knowingly do that? Understand her predicament and what you're forcing her to do. But ironically, talking does not seem to be the solution to the situation. But as you take damage, something interesting happens. She looks through us, but as your health depletes, she intentionally starts to miss you. She doesn't want this fight as much as you do. If you try to walk into the attacks, they simply avoid you. You can't kill yourself. You spare her, but nothing happens. It leaves people really confused to understand. What do you do to not kill her? Do you strike her down? But you spare her, and more ellipsis happen. There's a reaction. It's faint, but it's there. Three. And she can't bring herself to finish you. You're the only company she's had in years. And she doesn't know what to do. She won't even look you in the eyes. What are you doing? Attack or run away! She wants you to strike her down. She doesn't want to have to make the choice to finish you. What are you proving this way? We're proving to you what you taught us. That battles don't need to be solved through violence. Fight me or leave. Tori was acting aloof. Stop it. You can continue, but stop looking at me that way. Toru is acting aloof again. Go away! She's becoming more distressed. She's uncomfortable by our persistence. We're a little girl facing up to somebody ten- like, not, not ten times, but three times our size. The ellipsis of Max, to make you think that she's gone back to her original state. To make you think that mercy is not an option. But it is. I know you want to go home, but... But please, go upstairs now. The music stopped. I promise I will take good care of you here. I know we do not have much, but... We can have a good life here. She's bargaining with us. She's desperate. Why are you making this so difficult? Sometimes mercy doesn't mean everyone's happy. Please, go upstairs. She's becoming more sad. She, you know, it's, it's eating her up inside. <laughs> 
pathetic, is it not? I cannot save even a single child. No. I understand. You would just be unhappy trapped down here. The ruins are very small once you get used to them. It would not be right for you to grow up in a place like this. My expectations, my loneliness, my fear. For you, my child, I will put them aside. If you truly wish to leave the ruins, I will not stop you. However, when you leave, please do not come back. I hope you understand. It would probably hurt her too much for us to come back. Goodbye, my child. Goodbye, Toriel. And we can never return. And with that, we leave. But can we call her? No one picked up. And with that choice that we made, we have to push on. Down an endless hallway. Or not so endless. To a familiar face. Clever. Very clever. You think you're really smart, don't you? In this world, it's kill or be killed. So you were able to play by your own rules. You were spared the life of a single person. <laughs> I bet you feel really great. You didn't kill anybody this time. But what will you do if you meet a relentless killer? You'll die, and you'll die, and you'll die. Until you tire of trying. What will you do then? Will you kill out of frustration? Will you give up entirely on this world? And let me inherit the power to control it? I am the prince of this world's future. Don't worry, my little monarch. My plan isn't regicide. This is so much more interesting. And that was the end of Undertale, everybody. The demo, set to release in Spring 2014, made by Toby Radiation Fox. Please support this game. Play it yourself. Find your own way to pe play what- huh? No, not yet. Really? When are we gonna show up? Well, this is just a demo, so... Never? What? You're ribbing me! I thought I was the star of this game. <laughs> They have to see my cool outfit. Hey, you, you, yeah, you, buddy, do me a favor. My brother really wants to, for you to see his cool outfit. Make sure that happens someday. Sans, who are you talking to? Yes, the person using Comic Sans as a font is called Sans. Nobody, Pepperius. Wink. And that was the end of Undertale. The game remembers you. In the game's save data, you can come back, and Flowey knows what you've done. He knows everything. But what will you do? I'll leave a link in the description with any relevant information that you might need. This has been Undertale, everybody. Please support it.